Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to create a simple car loan repayment schedule. In the second half of the video, I'll show you how to add extra repayments to reduce the time it takes to pay off the debt. I'll be using Google Sheets, but if you use Excel, you can easily follow the exact same steps to get the exact same results. Please also make sure to subscribe to my channel down below so you don't miss any of my future content. First, let's load Google Sheets. You can do this by opening google.com and using the options button at the top right of the screen. At the bottom right corner, hover over the plus sign and select the pencil. This loads up a fresh spreadsheet that we can work from. There are four pieces of information we require for a simple schedule. First, we have the loan amount. This is the amount of debt needed to purchase the vehicle. Second is the annual interest rate. Third is the term of the debt in years, which for a car loan generally ranges between one and five years. And fourth, we have the number of installments in a year. If you make repayments on a monthly basis, this will be 12, fortnightly 26, and weekly 52, and so forth. So let's jump over to Tesla's website to see how much we need for a Model 3. The price on the website is currently $65,900, but after adding all of the fees, the car will set you back around $68,000. This will be our loan amount. If we jump over to the financing section of the Tesla website, we can also see that Tesla currently charges an interest rate of 8.95%. So let's go back to our calculator and add these values in. First, we add the loan amount of $68,000 and then the interest rate of 8.95%. Let's now add a term of three years, and as we want to pay monthly, our number of annual payments will be 12. Next, we need to put all of these together and calculate what our installment, or our payment amount, will be. For this, we'll be using the PMT formula. What we need to do is to key the equal sign and then PMT. Now we need to use a single bracket and a guide should pop up. This tells us what we'll be keying in here, just in case you get stuck. We start with our rate, which is the interest rate we keyed in cell B2, and then we use a forward slash to divide this by the installments per year we defined in cell B4. This gives us the interest rate per installment, in this case a month. We then use a comma and need to define the number of installments over the term of the loan. To do this, we need to take cell B3, which is the term of the loan in years, and multiply this by the installments per year we defined earlier. With three years of monthly payments, we'll make 36 payments over the life of the loan. Insert another comma. Now we need to input the present value. First, we need to put a negative sign and then the loan amount in cell B1. This is our debt amount of $68,000. The fourth item we can define is the future value of the loan. If you choose to have a balloon on your loan, you can include that here. If you don't have a balloon, you can simply use a value of zero. And with another comma, we can define where payments are made at the start of a period or the end. Generally speaking, for car loans, it's at the end, so we use a value of zero. If on the other hand you're calculating a lease, you'd generally pay in advance, so it'd use a value of one here. If you are uncertain, consider whether your lender required your first instalment when you took on the debt. If they didn't take an upfront payment, it's likely paid in arrears and you use a value of zero here. If you close the bracket and hit the enter key here, the installment calculation will now appear. For our loan, this comes to $2,160.80 per month. Going back to the Tesla financing calculator, if we assume there is no deposit or balloon, we get to the exact same result. If your car loan has a slightly different number, that isn't a worry, as sometimes there can be differences based on their calculation methodology. I made a video showing how this works in another video. In this video, we're keeping things simple, so you'll get a rough idea of what your repayments could look like. Now let's create the schedule. In cell A9, type a zero. This represents the first day of your loan. In cell A10, use the equal sign and type sequence. Now use a bracket and multiply both cell B3 and B4 then close the bracket. You can now see numbers all the way up to 36, representing your installments over the life of the loan. Alternatively, you can simply type each of these in. Now let's write in our schedule columns. You can change the names or rearrange the columns however you wish. In cell A8, type period. In B8, type balance. In C8, type installment. In D8, type principal. And finally, in cell E8, type interest. Feel free to highlight these in bold if you prefer. In cell B9, use the equal sign and select cell B1. This gives us our loan balance when the loan begins. Now go to cell C10 and use the equal sign and select cell B6. Now use the F4 button on your keyboard. This locks the cell reference, so when we repeat the formula, it doesn't change the cell it's referencing. To the far right is cell E10. Use the equal sign and then select cell B9. And the asterisk or multiplication sign open bracket, select cell B2, and lock the cell reference, 
then divide the cell by B4, also ensuring that it is locked. Close the brackets and we have the interest component of the instalment. If you are new to loans, when you make a repayment, it comprises both principal and interest. Principal is your repaying of the loan amount, in this case the $68,000, while interest is what the lender earns in exchange for offering you the money for three years. To work out the principal component of each instalment, simply click on cell D10, use the equal sign, then click cell C10, the minus sign, and sell E10, then close the bracket. This is the amount you're paying off the loan with each instalment. You'll notice that cell B10 is empty. What you'll need to put in here is key and equal sign, then B9, a minus sign, and sell D10. After you make a single instalment, your balance drops from $68,000 to $68,346. This is what paying off the car loan looks like. So now we have our formulas created. Let's drag those right to the bottom of the 36 installment rows. As you can see, in cell B45, we have a value of zero, which shows we have fully paid the loan off in its entirety once the 36th installment has been made. If you have a loan with a balloon, that is the value that will appear here. So that's a simple car loan. Let's now change things up by adding extra payments. These allow us to reduce the term of the loan and pay it off quicker. In cell F8, write extra payments. Below that, in cell F9, just key in a zero for now and drag that all the way down. In cell B10, at the end of the formula, add a minus sign and select cell F8. Then drag this formula all the way down to the bottom. Now we can add extra payments and see that reflected in the schedule. If we add an extra payment of say $5,000 in cell F14 for example, if we scroll down, we can see some negative values appear in the balance column. Where we go from positive to negative values, that is our new loan term for this car loan. In this case, it lands somewhere between about 33 and 34 months, instead of the original 36 months. Easy, right? So that covers if we add extra payments to the schedule. Now let's remove the extra payment and play with the loan term. If instead of paying monthly, we decide to pay fortnightly, this is how we'd do it. At the top of the page, select cell B4 and change this value from a 12 to a 26, representing a fortnight has 26 installments in a year. You'll see the values jump and the numbers on the left of the page jump out to 78 payments from 36. All we need to do here is to copy our formulas down as the hard work has already been completed. In cell B87, again, we see a zero balance. There is a universe of combinations you can create here. Try with weekly payments, larger loan amounts, different terms, anything you want to test. This calculation will help you get your head around how a car loan works and perhaps even strategize how to pay it off quicker. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. If you found it helpful, I'd love it if you left a comment with any other suggestions for other videos that I can make in the personal finance space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.